Welcome everybody. I am super excited to have Todd Brown here with me uh, today. Uh, not only did we coordinate t-shirt colors, which I'm very impressed with because fashion, look, yes, you may have come here for some marketing advice, but honestly, I know you're here for the fashion and you know, we're Todd and I are here to serve. Uh, but in all seriousness, this uh, live session here today is all about, uh, there's no pitchy pitchy, it's all 100% your chance to ask Todd here your specific questions about anything to do with the E5 marketing method. And that's what we're, that's what we're here to do today. You can see on the screen here, my extraordinary graphic representation of a key element and something that I think we'll refer to time and again as we go through this process. I've got an even better one for you, uh, Todd. Check this out. Whoa! Look at that. Uh, look at that piece of art. It's, it's, in fact, <laughs> I am thoroughly he's, impressed. He, he's now having an epileptic fit. Uh, he's I've... never seen Prospect Awareness <laughs> Pyramid rendered so magnificently. Uh, May, that's the word I was looking for. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, so this is all about your questions, okay? This is all about your questions about the E5. So Todd, to just to set the frame, um, in fact, no, I'm going to set the frame for a second because, you know, Todd's going to say stuff like, oh, you know, E5, it's awesome. It's really, really cool, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm here to tell you, there's a reason why I'm, I don't promote much stuff. I don't... Uh, you know, do much stuff in terms of affiliate things, but there's a, a reason why I'm pushing this so hard, and that is because uh, the most one of the most successful promotions I've ever run, literally in my career, and allegedly, you know, I'm I'm a pretty good copywriter, but I went to this too. Todd was kind enough to invite me uh, to the Gaylord for the E5 camp, so I went deep inside to uh, learn uh, the E5 method over two days. And I came, I was blown away. I genuinely believed this was uh, such an advance in uh, marketing direct mate. It's very rare where you see somebody actually move the ball forward in direct marketing. And, and that's what I saw with the E5 method. Things like the unique mechanism, things like understanding the marketing thesis, the lead and the, you know, stuff like, you know, this pyramid here, the prospect awareness pyramid were so uh, just mind blowing. But then what was even more extraordinary is when I arrive home, I've got this, uh, you know, where is it? It's literally just, I literally have it sitting here because it's, uh, you know, it's absolutely crucial to me is I have this baby, right? And what it is, is this, you know, there's courses and then there's courses, you know, where something is literally step by, look at this, step by step with worksheets and the, and the whole box and dice. And I used it to create my Swedish scientist promo. It was without doubt the most successful promotion I've done in years. Uh, people were, you know, I had marketing luminaries saying, Ed, I've got to know, what's the Swedish scientist, 10 violinists and a guinea pig? I have literally had people in, please, mate, I've got to know, like people you would all know, Todd and I's friends would say, what is that? I'm desperate to know what that is. What it was, was an example of something I picked up from Todd called the big idea. And so I've been teaching uh, Todd stuff in my academy because I, I genuinely believe for a lot of people, they're very intimidated by creating sales campaigns. There's, there's a lot of entrepreneurs who are um, very fact finder based. They're very research based. And there's us quick start types who you know, are not intimidated so much by the sales, but we don't do any of the research or the, the work. So you know, we, to climb the mountain, we run up the mountain and die at the snow line because we forgot to even dress, let alone carry any uh, things. We just go and YOLO up the, up the mountain, right? So this is this is the this is the frame I want to give you for 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 Todd here today. So I genuinely think this is a, a, is absolutely a breakthrough. It's designed for modern times. So with that, Todd, 
perhaps what I could get you to do is just so for people who are joined here, who just arrived here, who don't know what E5 is, what's your what's the bumper sticker? How do you describe it to people? And then we'll get straight into questions. Yeah, great, great question. And let me say this first, you know, um, first of all, man, it's a total honor to be here. It was I was thrilled when I saw your name on the list to uh, to be there. And it was a it was a total honor and still somewhat, you know, surreal for me to be up there sharing this this method with folks like you and and everybody else that was in the room. It was it was incredible. Um, and, you know, it's also important for everybody to understand that, you know, I'm I'm just a dude from New Jersey that very similar to where many of you are right now. I just was enamored with this whole idea of marketing and being able to, uh, you know, generate sales online. And I've just stood on the shoulders of giants. I've been blessed to have some incredible people in my life, some mentors, uh, specifically really Mark Ford. Uh, you may know him as Michael Masterson. And so, you know, I take very little credit for any of these individual components I just happen to in over the last 15 years doing this see that when you pulled these things together they just worked like gangbusters and and there were other things that didn't work like gangbusters and so they never made it into this this methodology with that being said the e5 camp method is it's a it's a very different way of generating consistent daily, new customer sales. It works regardless of your product, regardless of your price point, and regardless of your marketplace. And unlike the typical sales funnel models that are, that are being taught or being used, um, which are great for the top of the pyramid, which we'll get into, and are, are great for kind of selling, what the E5 camp method does for you is it turns the biggest segment of the market, folks that are lower on the pyramid, into excited buyers. And it does it by creating demand for your product and only your product before you ever even present the offer. And it does it through uh, a unique type of simple education that allows you to become positioned as an expert, as an authority. It allows you to build goodwill. It allows you to uh, become the, the kind of the hero amongst wolves out there um, to prospects um, and, and do it in a way where it leads to folks eager and excited to buy your product. And that's the core of an E5 camp uh, campaign. What I was so impressed by was the fact that it's not salesy, right? It's yeah. it's not a, you know, there there are no tricks in the sense that the the whole thing that's put together, and for a lot of people, it's so intimidating for them to create a traditional copywriting sales letter or a direct, you know, and and this is, you know, and we use the words campaign and funnel. And what I wanted to try uh, when I was uh, trying to teach the academy about what you'd done, one of the things I thought was so clever was by separate, by creating the design, you know, designing, engineering the campaign, the funnel. Think of the funnel in big terms, not in terms of Rusty Brunson click funnels terms just yet, right? That's the media. That's the media part of what yeah. this is. First of all, you create the entire campaign. And what was so exciting to me and something that I came uh, away with was the fact that, you know, a lot of us uh, were on a product creation bandwagon or, you know, that's a nice way of putting it. Uh, maybe a um, mouse wheel might be a better, you know, creating new products constantly for our audience. Whereas what I really understood and something that was a huge aha moment for me during E5 was that you can always create a new marketing timeline for the product. And you mentioned Agora there and maybe just uh, because, you know, you, uh, you know, Agora has got you in as a consultant. Maybe very briefly explain what Agora is, because I think a lot of people don't realize what it is. Yep. And more importantly, um, just explain, reveal the curtain a little bit about the way they use big ideas and then take it back to just the most simplest of products. 
So yeah, yeah, I love it. And you said so many gems that I don't want to, um, I don't want to gloss over. So let's just take a step back for one second. You know, first, Ed, you said something that I think is one of the most powerful lessons that uh, foundational lessons for everybody on here to learn, and that is that there's a tremendous difference between marketing and selling. They're not the same activity, and they don't have the same objective. A lot of online marketers confuse, they, they conflate the two, and they think that marketing and selling are the same activity, but they're not. Selling is what you do when you are speaking to a prospect who knows what it is that they want. They, they know the type of product that they want, and they really want to understand what's different about your, your product, what, what makes your product better than the others. But marketing is, and, and selling is all about the product. It's all about the features. It's all about the price, the terms, the guarantee. It's all about the bonuses. It's all about you, your company. Marketing is all about the prospect. And marketing is all about the prospect needs, wants, desires, fears, emotions, and the solution that is the best for them. And as Peter Drucker, one of the greatest management gurus ever to live, said, the job of marketing is to make selling superfluous, to make selling unnecessary, meaning the job of marketing is to set up the sale of your product. The job of marketing is to get prospects to want your product. So that when it comes time to quote unquote sell, you're really just presenting an over the top, superior, irresistible, no brainer offer. And they're thankful to jump at it. And that's important. It's important because I'm not a salesperson. You're not a salesperson. Everybody watching this, you're not salespeople. We're marketers. And the beauty is that when you do marketing the right way, like we're going to be talking about it, and we're going to pull back the curtain as far as you want, Ed. Like, I don't want this to become some superficial thing. I want people to have ahas and epiphanies. When you do it the right way, you don't have to sell because the selling, setting up the sale, if you will, is done in the marketing. Now, I first learned that, like when I when I first started um, online many many moons ago, studying folks like um, like you, Ed, and and really paying attention to experts. You know, there were folks back then that opened my eyes to um, this idea of you know, sal salesmanship in print. You know, that's what the legends of, of, uh, of direct response from many decades ago said. And while the legends and, and all of their publications, folks like uh, the Robert Collier Letter Book and John Caples and Vic Schwab, How to Write a Good Advertisement, and, and Joe Sugarman and Ted Nicholas and certainly Gary Halbert, Sir Gary Halbert, uh, and, you know, all, I love these guys. They're my most cherished uh, um, possessions, their books. But I don't believe that it's still salesmanship in print today because we ha because those guys had it was a it was a one call close so to speak it was I get it out in front of you and I got to make the sale in this small space advertisement we have the luxury of follow up and we have the luxury today of retargeting and we have the luxury of multi step marketing campaigns and so and, and Todd to just not to interrupt you flow here but there's something else that is absolutely keen to understand. When all those guys were at their peak, there were four TV channels. Yeah. There was maybe one newspaper, a couple of radio stations, and a letter. Yeah. Today, people are so bombarded with marketing messages and so on. Not to say that they're not disregarding any of the fundamentals that they teach for one second, yeah. but the reality is unless you can cut through uh, the incredible density of information that we have to deal with today, as opposed to the relatively light amount of information. You know, when Caples and Co were doing that, there wasn't even television, yeah. right? So yeah. it's that's a very important point. Keep going. No, well said, man. I think that you know, well, well said. You know, today, uh, you know, you have to understand the evolution of your prospects, regardless of what market you're in. That you know, today, like you were just saying, Ed, right? Folks are bombarded with thousands of marketing and advertising messages and claims. You know, between direct mail and internet and billboards and radio and satellite and and uh, I mean, my gosh, everywhere you look, right? And today, because of how easy it is for folks to put up a a web page and and put out. A, a sales funnel, um, your folks are bombarded with garbage copy and exaggerated claims, and it makes them highly skeptical, jaded in, in many cases in many markets, 
of trusting a, a marketing message. And so we're going to get to how you cut through that clutter in just a bit. But so, mm -hmm. Ed, you asked, you know, you, you mentioned Agora. And so, so everybody understands Agora is the today the 800 pound gorilla the behemoth in the world of direct response marketing they do about just about a billion dollars a year in sales that's billion with a b they market and sell mostly uh, mostly newsletters, mostly information, but they do have some divisions that have physical physical products in there, supplements, survival um, goodies, and whatnot. And um, and I, you know, Agora has grown from a small publishing company to a billion dollar a year uh, company. And I was just fortunate and blessed to get to be around Mark Ford. Um, Mark, you might know him under his pen name, Michael Masterson. He's got something like over 12 books, two or three, which are New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestsellers. Mark was really the marketing mastermind behind the growth of Agora. And, and uh, you know, when I asked one day, when I asked Mark, uh, what was it that allowed Agora to grow so big and so quickly, right? And Mark is not at all the typical marketing guy. He's certainly not at all the typical sales guy. He's an intellectual. He was in the 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 um, the, the Peace Corps. Like he was in his his parents were teachers. He was an English teacher. He loved to write. He writes poetry. Create he paints. Yada yada yada. Right. Well, I asked him. I said, "What, Mark? What the heck allowed you guys?" To grow so quickly. I thought Mark was going to say it's our copy or it's the size of our email list or it's our budget or it's the amount of traffic, but that's not at all what he said. What he said to me was he said, Todd, we realized early on, and get this because this is a monster lesson right here for everybody. He said, Todd, we realized early on that we as marketers are really in the idea business. That's the business at, at, that, that we are in. That's at the root of everything we do. It's our job in all of our marketing campaigns to develop uh, um, shocking, startling, interesting, captivating, compelling, new, unique, and fresh ideas. Before we write a single word of copy, before we write a headline, we identify what we believe is what's called a big marketing idea. Remember, for all of you guys and gals, the headline is just the vehicle that expresses the underlying idea. Right? That's all it is. It, every headline expresses an idea. And behind every marketing campaign, there is an idea, something that hopefully grabs your market's attention, is emotionally compelling and intellectually interesting to them, and most importantly, is different, is unique, is something that they have not heard before. Remember, if what we bring to the market is similar to what they've heard already. If it's a variation of really what they've heard already, right? Uh, why should they pay attention to us? Why should they pay attention to us, right? And the thing that I want you to understand, it, it all begins there. That's when Mark introduced me to the big idea, the big marketing idea, not the so, idea. Go ahead, Dad. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, sorry, I just wanted to illustrate that. I wanted to yeah. let's let's lay over an actual, real, live proof of concept of the big idea, so people can understand what, you know, really. Let's put this in. So I heard this, and I thought, right, that is awesome. Because if you think about it, when I was launching the academy, if I just, you know, an internet marketing, it's a cauldron, right? It's a it's a cauldron of uh, people who are very sophisticated because they're really into the market. Some would argue jaded. Uh, some would argue very cynical because there are huge claims made. You know, and I love the word claim because ultimately that's what you're making is that my product will deliver this. It's a claim, right? And I'm listening to what Todd's saying about Agora here. And I realize that if I just go, hey gang, I've got this amazing new coaching program instant and the phrase that Todd uses which again blew me away instant mental opt-out because there's a million coaching and what's worse in my case I had a very different like genuinely different idea for my coaching program right and if people just lumped it in and say oh coaching ten thousand dollars 
you know, that there, there's an instant like that box, and we need this survival mechanism because we've got all these thousands and thousands of marketing messages. We've got to shut everything out, you know. So as soon as you see a word like a mental opt-out word, like coaching, for example. And this goes for any market that has coaching, right? Literally any market that goes, coaching. I'm a coach, I'm a health coach, I'm a paleo coach, I'm a right instant mental optic. Like people have already got their box with coach in their mind, right? So that was the huge thing. So, okay, what's my big idea going to be? And if people are looking at the screen right now, you can see the marketing timeline in front of you, which uh, Todd teaches, at the very left-hand end of this marketing timeline is the big idea. And very interestingly, when you go to create your marketing timeline, you don't start with the big idea. And I think that's very, very, very important. But we just focus on the big idea. So when I got to the big idea process, what would make it stand out? So my big idea was the Swedish scientist, 10 violinists and a guinea pig, and how that will help you get to $10,000 a month this year. That was the big idea. So where does that come from? Well, it came from this book, right? Good old uh, Anders Ericsson here. I read this book over the, the, uh, the well, for you guys, winter, for us, summer holidays. Um, and in it was all of these ideas about amazing peak performance, how peak performers work. They need a squad, they need a coach. And so it got me thinking, and of course, the way that, and he's an academic, so he's run all of these tests, which included guinea pigs, violinists, and of course, he is a Swedish scientist. Uh -huh. So that was the big idea. And so yeah. that enabled me to get open rates like I've never seen before opt-in rates for the webinars like I've never seen before, right? Because it was intriguing. It was a big idea. Yeah. Okay, so where I before I cut in, Todd, we were talking about Agora and we were talking about big ideas. Yes. Something that really intrigued me about this though is I've seen dozens of their campaigns and I've got to be honest that the for me personally, I never went into Agora a lot because the style of advertising that they use didn't particularly attract somebody like me. Yeah. But that was a big mistake on my behalf, right? Because what amazed me, and maybe you can continue the story from here, is that all of these big ideas led back to one simple product. So continue. Yeah, no, and um and there's I gotta filter myself because there's so much I want to share. Like it's yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> But so, so, so there's a, so there's a couple things really quick, right? I, I, Cause really quick. So first and foremost, Ed just shared another nugget for you. And that is that coming up with big ideas and a big idea is, let me give you the big picture perspective. A big idea is an idea that is both emotionally compelling and it's intellectually interesting. We're going to come back later. I'm sure to how you make it emotionally compelling. But the thing that I want you to understand is that it's not reliant on your creativity. The big ideas don't come as a flash of inspiration. They don't come yes. by sitting down with a pet. They come through the examination stage of the E5 camp method. They come from digging in the right way into the product and within the product and within the market, you're able to find the um, the big idea. And like Ed said, the aim is is to prevent mental opt-out. Mental opt-out is when a prospect comes to your the first web page in your marketing campaign, they read the headline which communicates the idea. And mental opt-out is when they say, Oh that, I've heard that. I've seen yeah. that. There's a YouTube video on that. There's a book on that. There's, you know, uh, um, there's a webinar on that. So and so is 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 offering that. And so you need you need an idea that prevents that. Now I'll throw something else out just for those nerds like me with this kind of stuff that I learned from Bill Bonner. Bill Bonner was Mark's partner. He's really the founder of Agora. And Bill said it like this. He said you have to prevent what's called the categorical imperative. The categorical imperative. And the categorical imperative, this fancy pants word, is really just this idea of you want to prevent your prospects from taking what it is that you're saying and putting it in a box. Like Ed, when you talk about coaching, well, well, if if your market is filled with coaching, if your market knows, has an idea of what coaching is and has been exposed to coaching offers, you've just allowed them to put what it is that you're talking about in a box. You've triggered the categorical imperative. 
with your marketing, you want to prevent that. You want to prevent them from saying, oh, this. That's why, just as a side note, I'm not at all a fan of copywriting templates and fill-in-the-blank worksheets, especially in markets that are crowded and competitive and filled with savvy direct response marketers because those trigger the categorical imperative. That's where a big idea comes in and, uh, and prevents that from... Uh, from happening. Okay. Now let me let me let me fast forward for one second. Let's just I'm going to do this kind of uh, fire hose of of content, diving into the E5, uh, diving deeper into the E5 camp method, and then we're gonna you're gonna see how this comes back to structuring your own big idea. So at the root of an E5 camp um, campaign, I said earlier it's a it's a simple education based marketing message that creates demand for your product or service. So how does it do that, right? How does it do that and how does it do that without, without selling? So it does that first and foremost by identifying what's called your product's unique mechanism. Now this isn't something that, this isn't a name or, or something that I came up with. It was first talked about by Eugene Schwartz, one of the greatest advertising copywriters ever to live, in his book Breakthrough Advertising which is the absolute best book on marketing ever published, hands down, bar none. My good friend Brian Kurtz from Boardroom, he publishes it now. It's not cheap, it's about 200 bucks. Um, uh, and it's a little tough to get through, but if you do, I promise you, uh, it'll be, uh, it would be, it's a great read for you guys. Well, the unique mechanism is nothing more than the piece, part, component, process, aspect, or system behind your product or service that delivers the result. It's the thing within your product or service that delivers the promise. It might be the unique algorithm behind your SEO software that works to get top rankings. It might be the unique bodywork method that you use in your massage practice to alleviate your, your client's pain. It could be the unique recipe that you use in your birthday cakes that make them um, I'm so effective. It could be the unique combination of nutrients in your vitamin supplement that help to lower cholesterol. It's the piece, part, component, process, or aspect, or system behind your product or service that delivers the result. And every product or service has a unique mechanism. As long as you're not selling something like a pure commodity, like a gallon of gasoline, your product or service has a unique mechanism. There are three different ways to come up with a unique mechanism. Two of the three ways are just a marketing invention. But here's where the magic happens. Once you've identified the right unique mechanism within your product and, and every product or service can have multiple unique mechanisms it, it really is all about identifying what's already been said by competitors what's already being presented as a mechanism and make sure that we find and identify a unique mechanism right because you don't want just a mechanism that is offered in multiple products you want a unique mechanism why that that's sorry to interrupt Todd just just to one part of this thing, just what you said there which was important because this goes you know i teach for example uh it's very important to research your market and a lot of people teach researching your market from a business model perspective from how are they making money perspective from a what are they doing you know people are uh are breaking down our, our mate rusty brunson uh you know talked about used the term funnel hacking you know going into that what you're talking about here, which I think is so, uh, dare I say, it, unique, um, is the fact that um, you're not looking at this specifically from a, what's the business model here? What's the funnel hack here? You are looking at it, and this is so important for people to capture. You are looking at what are their marketing appeals? What are their unique mechanisms? What emotions are they triggering in their copy? Not, and this is the key, not so you can copy those things, no. Right. So you make sure you avoid all of those little landmines that have been laid out where somebody can say, oh, I've seen that before. Yeah, okay, I can Google that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. right yeah, right. that's so huge. That's so huge because what Ed's talking about is this. Like when I said we, we look at what's being offered to your marketplace, not to copy it, to avoid it. You don't yeah. want to bring the same thing to the market. That's not how you get attention. That's not how you stand out in a crowded space. 
right? So you're looking at, during the examination stage, one of the other areas that we look at besides the product is competitors. And then and we look at competitors so we know what not to say. Now, once you have the unique mechanism, the right unique mechanism, and you we've named it for you, the next step, and this is the magic, and I want you to get this, so please, this is the power of this thing, that we then have the ability to create a simple education-based message, not about the product, but about the unique mechanism. And remember, the unique mechanism is different from the product. The product contains the unique mechanism, the product delivers the unique mechanism, but when you're talking about the product, you're selling, right? We're not going to talk about the product until we present the offer. Before we present the offer for your product, we want prospects to want the unique mechanism. Now, when you create a simple education-based message about the unique mechanism, you are able to you come off as an educator you come off as an advisor you're guiding your prospects you're delivering valuable content you're giving them valuable information you're teaching them you're opening their eyes to why that unique mechanism your unique mechanism is the best solution for their situation right now you're not pitching a product you're not giving a sales pitch. You're not coming off icky. You're not coming off making these wild claims about how great your product is. No, you're teaching, you're advising, you're guiding. Now here's the thing. When you come to the end of your campaign, when you structure that simple marketing message the right way, right? And, and that's probably maybe somewhat beyond the scope of, the, of this little training, but I just want you to get this. When you are done with your marketing message and you could see from Ed's timeline right here, how he has believe the marketing thesis. When they believe that that unique mechanism that you just taught them about, right? When, when you have established in their mind that that's the answer, that that's the perfect solution, what you've done is you've perfectly set up the sale for your product or service. Essentially, at that point, all roads lead to you and your product because the only place they can get that unique mechanism is with your product. You did sorry, not- practical, yeah. so, oh, Sorry, practical, sorry. No, no, go ahead, that's all right. No, uh, no, go ahead. We've got two, no, but I, I just wanted to bring this to give them an absolute practical example of what you just said. So my big idea, if you're looking at the screen now, was, which, as I say, was developed, and we, we've touched on that, was developed by a step-by-step -step process that I used using this book, right? So, you know, this, this folder and material and all the online stuff, right? I developed up the big idea, the Swedish scientists, 10 violinists and guinea pigs. Now, the marketing thesis, the thing that's just literally before we made the sale, and this is really important for people to understand, right? This is such a profound thing. At no point was I selling my product. I never mentioned the academy. I never mentioned anything to do with what I was specifically doing because here's what I had to convince people of. My marketing argument, which is the core of an education campaign, was that if you're starting out, if you haven't got to $10,000 a month yet, because of all of the research in, in this particular book here, I had to convince people that you needed a coach, you needed a coach that specialized in beginners, you need a squad because that's the, when you work in a group and you get coached in a group, the results are scientifically better than this and then there was one thing that I had to knock on the head because even though I avoid and like I had mental opt-out words like using the word I tried to not use the word coach in any stretch until I'd gone deep into the marketing argument because it was like a landmine I was like dodging a landmine here why because it's the moment I said coaching or mentoring in my marketplace that instantly applies a $10,000 price tag and people say, oh, this is coaching. Oh, this is mentoring. It's so expensive. I myself have had 10, 15, $20,000 mentoring and coaching programs in the past, right? So that was this massive landmine. So before I could mention the word even coach, I had to create a marketing argument that people needed a guide that was expert and beginners because the science tells us that, that they need a group, science tells us that. So once I got to the point of saying, okay, the desired result 
which is getting to ten thousand dollars a month, which I think is a really important milestone for a beginner. Right? That's that's where you've got choices. You can you know you can quit whatever you're doing, because my market. It's people who have got day jobs and all those sorts of things. So when I was creating that campaign, it was all about no mention of the academy, no mention of that. I had to convince people. By the time I got to the uh, marketing thesis here, which is the step just before the offer here that you can see, I had to convince people that they need coaching, they need a squad, and they need uh, the way that they improve is through weekly course correction, drills, mental models. So I taught them that. And then at that point, only after I thought I'd done everything I could to convince them of that case, right? Nothing to do with my product. Then and only then I said, gang, I'd like to present something to you. I've been working on it. This is going to be my day job. Here is the academy. I designed it because of everything I learnt about this groundbreaking peak performance uh, study, and the, yeah. so there was no, it was all education, right? Yeah. It was all. Yeah, I love it, man. And there, there's so much that you know. At some point after the, you know, after we we close down the enrollment for uh, the masterclass, I want to get back on here, and I want to, I want to really dig deeper with you. Uh, you and I into that um, here. So I want to. I'm going to go deep for you guys because uh, because I love Ed Dale and I can't believe I'm on a webinar with Ed Dale. Um, no, but so it's if let me give you another example. Let me let's switch gears for one second. I know we're bouncing all over the place. This is so important and there's so much to share with you. But so one of my good friends is a gentleman by the name of Ryan Levesque. Many of you may know Ryan. He's the New York Times. Uh, best-selling author of the book Ask. He's the creator of the Ask Method. He's a genius dude, like taught neuroscience at Brown University, and <clears throat> phenomenal marketer, phenomenal entrepreneur, and a sweetheart of a guy uh, all around. Uh, but so I want you to I want to I want you to see something here. So when Ryan put together the marketing for his Ask Method masterclass, which is a great program, all about identifying buckets within your market and customizing your message to those different buckets, to those different segments. The thing that I want you to grasp, the little subtlety that I want you to grasp is this, that Ryan didn't, doesn't in his marketing talk about quizzes and, um, and surveys. Right, because if he was talking about quizzes and surveys, that's what I call that's a commodity, right? If he said it's all about quizzes and surveys, what people would do is what I what they what what would happen to Ryan is what I call the Google slap marketing trigger. That's where they hear Ryan say quizzes, um, surveys. He convinces them of the value of quizzes and surveys, and they press pause on his video. They go over to Google and they type in surveys quizzes in marketing and they find umpteen different softwares, umpteen different uh, blog articles and training. That's marketing a commodity. That's not what you ever want to do. See, in Ryan's marketing, what Ryan talks about is the ask method. And the ask method is not simple surveys. It's not simple quizzes. It's a lot deeper than that, right? And so what happens is, and then he talks about why the ask method works. And then he talks about, right, all of the, the evidence of, of folks identifying buckets and segments and, and, and all that. And, and he's got some tremendous success stories. And at the end of his marketing message, before he makes the offer, he leads prospects to say, wow, I get it. I need the ask method. Not, I need quizzes, not, I need surveys, but I need the ask method. What is the ask method? It's his unique mechanism. It's his way of solving the, 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 the problem, of addressing their needs, right? You cannot Google that and find it anywhere else. At that point, when he's led the thesis, when he's led his prospects to see that the perfect way to segment, identify buckets um, in your market is with the ask method, all roads lead to him. Understand, the ask method isn't the product, the product is the Ask Method Masterclass, which gives them the unique mechanism, right? You look at our buddy Jeff Walker, same thing. Jeff's not talking about launching your business or launching your product. Just talking about product launch formula and how product launch formula works. If he was talking about, this is, this is how you launch your business, pause, Google, launch my business, 
thousand and one articles, thousand and one YouTube videos. No, the methodology behind his workshop, his class, his his you know his thing is this formula for launching a product, and that's what he exposes you to. So at the end of his marketing, you're not like, oh, I need to launch my business. You're like, oh, I get it. I need to use product launch formula. All roads lead to Jeff. You cannot buy product launch formula anywhere else. You could learn product launching a product. You could learn quizzes, surveys, right? You can't learn ask method anywhere else. You can't learn product launch formula anywhere else. That's what you want to do. That's why you never want to build a marketing campaign around commodity positioning. For example, these guys that 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 sell marketing and 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 uh, and stuff for webinars, right? And they talk about, let me tell you why webinars are great. Let me tell you why you want to do webinars. Let me tell you why webinars will grow your business. Wrong. That's not because what happens is pause webinars. Oh, there's this guy that teaches webinars. There's this guy that teaches webinars. There's free YouTube videos. No, it's not it's not webinars. It's a specific methodology, a specific approach, a specific framework that you use with webinars that get the result. And you get the buy-in with prospects on that specific methodology, then you offer it to them in your program. That's the unique mechanism. Does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely. It absolutely does, and it's fantastic because you actually answered a, uh, one of the key questions from the academy here is the connection between the u unique mechanism and the big idea uh, and showing how that relates in, in the timeline, which is just absolutely fantastic. So I've got actually just uh, another really interesting question here that I got is what are the, what are the three types of leads? Can, we haven't talked about leads uh, much, and people can see the lead is the second part on the timeline uh, that you're working that work best with the E5 method. And I think you'll you'll change the question slightly here, but do you have any idea why they are a good fit? And I think you do have. Let me uh, bring up for you a this uh, oh, this no this diagram. And do you want to talk a little bit? What's a, what's yeah. what's the lead mean? Because a lot of people have got in their head, you know, headline plus paragraphs. But explain why the lead is important. What? And for me, again, having done this for decades, um, the mind blowing difference of what the lead is for, what the job of the lead is for, and then maybe then talk about how they relate to. The prospect awareness pyramid that I've got uh, in front yeah, of Yeah, I love it. I love it. Such an awesome question. So whoever asked that question, very, very savvy. So first of all, what is the lead? The lead is nothing more than the first 350 to 800 words of your marketing campaign. Whether it's a long form sales letter, short form sales letter, VSL, webinar, multi-part video sequence, it's the first 350, 800 words, right? Give or take. Depends on the length of your of your campaign. And so what's the job of the lead? What's the whole purpose of the lead? The whole purpose of the lead is to set the emotional hook, to get the prospect emotionally invested, emotionally engaged in, um, in the potential payoff that they can experience and why they can expect to experience the, the payoff. Now, just as a quick aside, right? Just as a quick aside, the you know we, we with the big idea, I said earlier on that the big idea is emotionally compelling and intellectually interesting. Well, a big idea is emotionally compelling when it contains two things: when it has a promise, a promise of transformation, of result, of outcome, of change, of alleviation of pain. It has a big, bold, audacious, but true and believable promise of result, a result that is exactly what your prospect wants. But what really makes it emotionally compelling is when it is backed by a unique mechanism. That's why we went to the unique mechanism. See, because what happens is when the unique mechanism, when you when you say you can experience X, Y, Z result, if you said to somebody, here's how you can lose 10 pounds a week, right? And that's all you said to them. And there's no unique mechanism behind it. It triggers mental opt-out because they've heard it. They've seen it. They've been presented with that kind of marketing message already. But when it's tied to the right unique mechanism, you give your prospects hope and excitement. 
hope that they can now finally achieve the results, experience the results that they want. Why? Because you're offering them something new and different, something they have not been offered before, something they haven't been tried before. Why? Because it's your proprietary method. It's your proprietary formula. It's your proprietary algorithm. It's your proprietary approach. And so they have hope and they have excitement that maybe this time I can experience the results. And so the, the lead simply expands on that. Right, the lead is designed to get them emotionally invested and excited over the fact that they can experience the result they want and, it's, and it can be delivered to them through something they haven't been offered and haven't tried before, right? And, and, and they see it as maybe this is the missing piece that I've been missing all this time. Maybe that's why those other, uh, uh, other fat burning supplements didn't work because they missed it. Maybe that's what was missing from the exercise programs that I've tried. Maybe that's what this was missing. This coaching didn't work. Right. Right, this this coaching didn't work because right. oh, coaching didn't work. Coaching's not for me because coaching. I tried coaching. Right, I've got that box. Yeah, I've tried coaching. It didn't work. Whereas, oh, hang on, this uh, the academy and its approach is completely different. That's not right. Right, it's almost like Ed. It, yeah, it's almost like saying this. Like to get a little advanced for one second. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like this. Ideally. When, like, ideally for you, right? I'm gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna do this publicly with everybody on here right now. <laughs> ideally for you, I would say, Ed. I want to. I would say to you, if it was me and you, if we were partners, I would say, Ed. Let's dive into what you're actually coaching them on. And I know you've got so much unique stuff and so many. You've got frameworks and you've got different things, right? You've got you've got an approach inside of your. Your, your coaching methodology. There's a methodology yeah. process, right? Like I remember, you know, first right. learning from you focus days and, 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 you know, like, you know, right. And you yeah. see, see, I'm a student. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's good. Right. So that allows us to say, this isn't just coaching, right? If you tried coaching before that, right. Like I understand that what this is about is X, Y, Z methodology. This is a yeah. unique methodology. What you've likely been missing is this framework and this framework and this framework, right? Like, and you Correct. believe that and you believe yeah, that that's right. right. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, um, yeah. So the question then becomes, well, which lead types, um, uh, um, work best with the E5 camp method? Well, they all work with the E5 camp method. The right question is which lead types work best with, the audience that you are targeting. Now this brings us to the awareness pyramid, right? And what this this pyramid, again, not my invention by any by any stretch, what this is about is how aware are the people you are talking to, how aware are they of the problem that uh, of their problem or a problem, the problem that your product solves, and how aware are they of your product and your type of product? Now, the question that I get all the time, and we'll break this down in just one second, but the question that I get asked all the time is, well, Todd, what, how do I know what segment, uh, uh, like what, what level on the awareness pyramid my market falls in? Well, your market falls into every level. You have people at every level in your marketing, potential customers at every single level. Completely unaware are the prospects that aren't even aware they have a problem, right? Let's say, for example, let's use this. Let's say you are a chiropractor, you know, the people that adjust the spine, right? And and so you're talking, let's say, let's say we're, we're focusing on low back pain. So there are people that don't have low back pain, right? Let, let's call it, let's say... Um, men over the age of 55 living in South Florida, golfing four times a week. Golf is one of the worst sports for low back health between flexion, rotation, terrible. So, right now you got men on uh, in that audience that are not, they don't have back pain. They're not even thinking about back, back pain. Therefore, they're not looking for a chiropractor or a massage therapist or anything like that. Then you've got one level up. You've got problem aware. And problem aware are the people that they're now aware that they've got low back pain, but they don't know yet what are the different solutions um, out there, right? They don't know yet, like, they, they're just aware of the problem. They haven't even narrowed down what their options are. Then we've got solution aware. Those are the guys that have back pain, and now they're aware that, all right, uh, there's a chiropractor, there's a massage therapist, there's physical therapy, there's surgery, there's over-the-counter counter painkillers, there's, there's uh, prescription painkillers. Then you've got product aware. 
And product aware are the people that have decided I want a chiropractor, right? Now I just need to find the best chiropractor in my area. And then you've got most aware. Those are the people that already know you, like you, trust you, and really they just want to know what the deal is, like what's the offer, right? What, what's, the, what's the deal? Well, it's incredibly important to understand what segment on this awareness pyramid you are targeting because it determines the type of lead that you're going to use, how you're going to open up your marketing campaign, um, and it ultimately determines the message that you're going to use. For example, going back to our chiropractor, right? So um, if we had an ad that said um, how to find the best chiropractor in West Palm Beach, Florida, right? Like got low back pain, how to find the best chiropractor in West Palm Beach, Florida. Well, that that's not going to appeal or work with the individual in the problem aware stage because they have not decided yet that they want to work with a chiropractor. They don't even know the different options out there, right? That's the kind of ad, right? That's the kind of direct um, lead that you would use with product aware, right? But the problem aware, you might just say, it might, you might have a marketing campaign that starts off with what is the, you know, what's the best way to naturally relieve low back pain? Right, and that's going to be much more appropriate for the problem aware. At the solution aware, you might focus on right what's what's better um, for alleviating low back pain: chiropractic, massage therapy, or painkillers. Right, and that's how you open it up because they're not they're they're not ready yet to look for the best chiropractor. They're still solution aware. The thing to understand, right, and completely unaware, if you said anything about low back pain, those people are not there because they're not aware of back pain. And we'll come back to how we tap into that, that segment um, um, in just a bit. The reason why I took this idea of levels of awareness and I put, I put them into a pyramid like this is because I want you to understand something, that the higher up on the pyramid you go, the easier it is to convert, the closer they are to making a buying decision, the shorter the campaign can be the higher you go up in the in the pyramid with who you're focusing on but the smaller the audience becomes the largest segment of your market is completely unaware they are completely unaware of their problem and i i want you to recognize right that we've all been taught that if you really want to um, if you really want to be able to market and have high you know crazy conversion levels you start with somebody that's got an urgent problem a pressing problem and yes, it's a lot easier to deal with somebody who's got a pressing problem than somebody who's not even aware of their problem. But the biggest universe is the completely unaware segment. That is your biggest uh, opportunity for growth. It's the most difficult. It takes the longest campaign, but it opens up a monster universe of people to you. So the, th this is what I want you to understand. The higher up on the pyramid you go, the more direct your lead needs to be meaning right like you know a buy one get one free kind of thing that's the most direct lead that you can get that's obviously not appropriate for a completely unaware problem where so that's appropriate for higher end of the the pyramid a story based lead for example that's great for the bottom of the of the pyramid right because you're not necessarily right like if we were going out to men over the age of 55 golfing 4 days a week completely unaware we're not obvi we're obviously not going to make a um a buy one get one free or free set of x-rays with your chiropractic visit but maybe we start off with a story of you know um of a guy in in his retirement in his you know in his retirement years golfing 4 days a week um and one mistake led him to never be able to play golf again and right and now and now like you're captivated if you're in that market because those guys are are afraid of that right and we open with a lead uh and then we we through that story lead excuse me through that story lead then we open up to the to the fact that this was a guy who was healthy happy no pain everything was great golfing with his friends and life was grand and then boom one day everything changed when he sustained a low back injury why cuz he didn't take care of his you know cuz he didn't take care of his low back Right, and, and it's essential to take care of your low back, but there are a lot of different ways that aren't good for a man over the age of 55 to take care of, right? There's one methodology that is that has been proven to be, right, and that's the, the, the Dale method of chiropractic care. And let me tell you why it works and how it works and blah, blah, blah. And by the end of that, right, we've just, yeah, we've just led them to say, right, remember, we don't want to, 
we don't we're not we're not convincing them of chiropractic that's the commodity it's my method of chiropractic that's that's the difference so to to, to answer the question finally the mm -hmm. all lead types work with the e5 camp method the lower you go on the pyramid in terms of who you're targeting the more indirect the lead has to be the higher up on the pyramid you go the more direct the lead can be agora so as a side note, Agora yeah. focuses on the bottom of the pyramid because it's the biggest and, universe. Yeah, and they focus it. But what was amazing with Agora is is that most of a lot of their marketing leads back to like a forty five dollar, you know, uh, stock picking newsletter, right? Yeah. And if you led with the stock picking newsletter, instant mental news. opt out, mental right. opt out, categorical imperative, heard it, seen it, done it, been there, goodbye. See you later, and that's a yeah. billion dollar business by chain, and they yeah. regularly change. That's the, how long has that newsletter been going for? Is it decades? Like some of their right? newsletters have been going, yeah, for yeah, decades. Yeah, decades. which is unbelievable and, in and of itself. No, like if you just were promoting the newsletter as a new, no, no, most businesses don't have a lifespan that long. It's a very yeah. rare business that has a lifespan. But if you change the idea, funneling people into the, the product and that's why you know for me okay this is the academy this is what I'm doing so next year I'll have a different uh, you know I'll have a different campaign yeah. to convince you of and a different element but it'll still be leading back to the academy absolutely you know, that's so. the that's the beauty of the thing that when you go back if you you know on the on on the timeline you know the the offer the newsletter if you will that gets presented mm -hmm. gets presented in that selling section the 25 yeah. percent everything yeah. else is really is education based and that's why like you look at you know it's it's amazing how they you know at agora they focus on ideas and the message the argument if you will um and what that allows you to do is that allows you to come up with virtually an unlimited number of ideas that you could build a marketing campaign around right because remember it's not about the product right it's not about the product and so um so the beautiful thing is that you can have a different marketing campaign every month for the same exact product and have yep. it continually like it just it works and works and works and works. It's incredible. You know, and the thing that I want everybody to get is really quick. It, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's, it's absolutely fine. In a sense, I just read this book. This book is all awesome algorithms to live by and artificial intelligence and all that. So I'm literally already thinking my next big idea is going to come out of this book that I read, yeah. right? Because once you, because if you don't, if you take all that mental uh, creation of new products and put that off on the table because you've got one product which you can constantly refine and make better and make it an incredible experience instead of thinking, oh, poof got that product done, now onto my next product, all of a sudden you've freed up all this mental capacity to give your existing customers way better service than you ever possi possibly could. So they're loving you yeah. and you get the virality of people saying, oh, this is awesome, right? That is a much better, that's a much smarter business model in the 21st century. Yeah. And then you've got the mental, all of a sudden, because you know your market, you've done all the work, you've gone through the entire E5 process and you can go, oh, then all of a sudden you've got your reticular activation system working and you can read a book and go, oh, hang on, oh. that is potentially a new big idea. This is the, this is the new, and off you go on the process. Exactly. Again. That's so, such a great, you know, early on when I first started, you know, it, for those of you that are in, for those of your folks that are in the information product business, you know, very early on, I really thought, you know, I, you know, we have to be prolific as, as info marketers, you know, things evolve so quick, you know, People, you know, a big idea today isn't necessarily a big idea a year from now, right? Um, but the thing that I used to think before I really kind of uh, was exposed to this methodology was that you had to be prolific in product creation. Really, you have to be prolific in marketing creation because it's not, it's not about the product. It's about how the product is being presented to the market. Right now, look, you may be able to come up with a campaign and have that one campaign work for months and months and months. I know yeah. I built the back <laughs> off of my business for almost yeah. 18 months with one single marketing campaign. But yeah. when it's time when you're not happy with your conversions or your return on investment anymore, you come, you don't have to dump the product and come up with a whole new product. Right mm -hmm. We're on the front end, when you're acquiring new customers, 
you you do what Agora does, and they've been selling the same newsletter for you know for years and years and years and years and years. But it's all about how it gets presented, how they grab attention, how they create engagement, how they prevent that mental opt out, and that comes from you know the the big idea. Skipping ahead for just one second, I want to make sure that everybody on here under, uh, understands that right. The big idea is what cuts through the cutter cl cl clutter cuts through the noise, gets attention by bringing something new, unique, and different, something emotionally compelling and intellectually interesting, something that speaks to both the heart and the, um, and the head. Then we put them into a campaign that sets that emotional hook in the first 350 to 800 words. And then yeah, and it go only convinces them that the only job of the lead, the only job of the lead, let's be super clear about this, is to get people to say, you know what, I'm going to give you the time of day to listen to your marketing argument. That's yeah. all it's about. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people are thinking about the headline from the perspective of the actual offer right. and like of, of the actual product. They think the headline should be related to the product. No, 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 no. The only thing the lead should do based on our pyramid and where our market is and the level of sophistication they're at, the only thing, and this was a mind blowing element for me, was all the Swedish scientists lead had to do was convince people that, you know what, I'm going to give you the time of day. I've got, Precious, I'm going to give you some of my precious time because you've intrigued me about this. This so this lead has got a hook into me so that I can present my marketing argument. Yeah, Continue. no, I think that it's just so brilliant. I love the way you you explain it. Um, and I know on the surface, like it can seem daunting and crazy and all. It's actually to me, and maybe I, you know, of course I live it, eat it, eat it, breathe it. But it, it's. It really is, it simplifies things. It doesn't make it more difficult. It, it simplifies things. Absolutely. Right? But you then go into this simple education-based marketing message that leads the prospect to see and believe how and why the unique mechanism can give them the results that they want. And the unique mechanism can only be found in your product. So when you offer it to them, they're grateful. They're excited. They don't feel like they've been pitched. They don't feel like they've been hoodwinked. They don't feel like they've just been sold to. They've mm -hmm. been educated. We just happen to educate them in a in a unique way that led them to see why your unique mechanism is the answer. And so you yeah. now are positioned as an expert, an authority. And you've just delivered valuable information. They're grateful. They're going to thank you for the information. It's amazing how people will buy and they'll thank you for opening their eyes to why this is the right thing for them. That's what this kind of campaign does and does it at a crazy high conversion level. It's just nuts. And, and I, I'm living proof of that. And, uh, and the thing that people need to understand is that what – Todd has done, let me just, I'll just randomly open up a section here, just, just so you can, uh, just so you can sort of uh, see here is, so you've got all the content and, you know, the video, but what's amazing, so what's this one? Engineering your marketing thesis, there you go. So there's actual, like, here's the step by steps and where, and, and I can absolutely concur that the whole E5 process, literally, I'm, I, I've got to be careful, see all the, these are all my, uh, See the, the cards there? The, there's, there's 30 cards. That's how much information I gleaned at the, uh, at the two days, uh, which is a record. It's a record. <laughs> I love the, it. For the number and of let me say this too, really, really quick. I'm sorry, Ed. Let me say, let me say this too. We actually, to really take things to another level, this is, I'm going to give a little plug for the E5 Camp Masterclass right now. Mm -hmm. To take things to another level, um, what we did was we had a custom portal built for folks to be able to input their information for those worksheets right in the portal and then if they want one of my faculty to give them personal audio feedback and direction on their submission they can do that so they're able to just go boo 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 submit and then click i want your i want somebody to review it and then my wow. yeah 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 it's crazy like because i i just want everybody to feel like this way if you want to get it feedback on it and critiques uh, on on your submissions, you do that, and then my team will send you back an audio message that, like, let's say, call it 24 to 48 hours. We got so many people coming in that made 48 yes. hours that That's when fun. you log back into that worksheet, you'll see an attachment which is an audio from somebody on my faculty, somebody who's paid. This isn't just like people filling in, yeah. right? And so, um, yeah, it uh, 
it rocks. And that is so crucial because one of the, you know, Dara, one of my contributions, minor contributions to uh, sort of the science of this, this whole thing is understanding that there are different entrepreneurial types. Yeah. And in particular, uh, a good 40% of people listening to this are in this high fact finder category, and they're great at researching, great at everything, but pushing the button on a campaign is a real challenge. And I am absolutely convinced for that, for that audience, E5 is manna from heaven. It's a one at Welton who's actually here on the, uh, the, the call. He is a nine fact finder, nine follow through. He's a beast of, of, but sales always was a hesitation point for him because it's just not th that part of it. Knowing where the, he wants to know what the result is before he does something <laughs> which is completely natural, which is, yeah. but it's actually hard because you don't know. And by going through and doing those step by steps, it's not even, it's not even copywriting. It's not even sales. Um, just uh, Dave asked a great question in, in here, which we can address really quickly is he said, but where does the lead go? Where does all this stuff go? And to me, this is the genius because where all this stuff goes is it goes in two places, right? It go once you've designed your minimum viable funnel and we might end on minimum viable funnel because I think this is a really powerful concept to, to end on today because uh, Todd's been amazing and very generous with his, with his time. Um, where uh, you decide based on where is your audience? What media do they consume? What's most appropriate? You could, the, the lead could be the first 30 seconds of a sales video. The, the, the marketing argument could be a series of three videos in, in inverted commas launch sequence. It's all dependent. And this is the, I hope people get this. This is the genius of this. You design it all on paper. Look, here it is. I, I've got this out, right? Here is the marketing scientist. See, look, there it is. There's a Swedish scientist using Todd's E5, right? Look at this. All of, this is the planning phase of the Swedish scientist. It's all done on paper. No technology, nothing to fight with, nothing. Because then once you've got this, then, and this is where we'll finish up on, the minimum, you use, you use it to create a minimum viable funnel. For, why go to all the effort of, building everything out and doing everything unless you understand that you've got a positive return on investment. So let's, let's finish off with that uh, today. So yeah, talk to me about well, minimum viable funnel. Yeah. And, and let me say this too, that, you know, don't get, don't get caught up in, should I use a webinar? Should I use a VSL? Should I use a long form sales letter? The, the, the communication channel is the least important of all of those. You know, if you line up 12 wildly successful marketers, odds are you're going to find a variety. You're going to find some that like our buddy, you know, uh, Russell, who's a wizard at freaking webinars, like an animal on webinars, mm -hmm. Frank Kern, an animal on webinars. But then you've got folks like Andre Chaperon who, you know, or Ben Settle, these guys that are phenomenal at email and they do, mm -hmm. you got Ryan Dice who self, you know, he, who admits he's not great on webinars. And so he delivers his stuff, you know, through his team with VSLs. You've got Jeff Walker, you know, some people are great on camera, some people aren't. Don't think that, it, you know, it's not the model. It's not the model. It's the message. It's, it's not the model. It's the message. That's why companies like Agora can take their VSL that's working, turn it into a long form sales letter. It works. Turn it into a direct mail piece. It works. Years ago, they had the biggest, most successful financial promotion ever in that world, what was called the end of America. It was a a video sales letter, like an hour and 16 minutes. They turned it into a long form sales letter. They turned it into a direct mail piece. They turned it into a book -a log what looked like a little paperback book and mailed it out. When you've got a great message, you've got a great message. There may be some nuances, some slight little variations in, um, in conversions, but the answer is not in the, in the model. The answer is in the message. Yeah. Uh, and so very, very quickly. And Ed, I want to make sure that we've an we answer everyone's question. So if uh, there I'm, are go more... I'm going through. Yeah, I'm going through and uh, it's it's uh, we're, we're doing well. So, okay. so let me. So yeah, I want to because I want to make sure uh, that we honor what you promised everybody. With uh, no, I, 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 
Yeah, mate, I haven't gone and, and said all the positive comments I'm getting here in questions, but uh, so, so the minimum are, viable yeah. funnel, really quick, minimum viable funnel. So the minimum viable funnel is just this. So in the evaluation stage of the E5 camp um, method, which is the third stage, the first stage is examine, second stage is engineer, third stage is evaluate, fourth stage is enhance, fifth stage is expand. In the evaluation stage, when you launch your, your new campaign, you don't want to invest the time building out um, all of the pieces like the upsell sequence, the, the downsell, the, the, the back end, um, all those things. The very first thing that we, yeah, the very first thing that you want to do is you really want to evaluate the profitability of the core elements, right? Like what, what does it matter if you build out an upsell if you don't know yet that your core offer is going to convert really well for you? Right? There's no value in building out the upsell. There's no value in building out the, the back end. If, if your initial offer, uh, if it's not as profitable as you want it to be, then that, that stuff doesn't matter. The minimum viable funnel is, a, is the minimum number of pieces to be able to test the core elements, to be able to test the big idea, the lead, the marketing argument, the marketing thesis, and the offer. For many of you, that may be literally as simple as an opt-in page, the marketing and sales, page or vehicle, um, an order form and a thank you page, and that's it, right? Um, you know, Agora runs it without even the opt-in page. So they'll do, use the marketing and sales page, the VSL, they'll have an order form and a thank you page. And, and you're able to know right away how profitable your campaign is. And only after you've you've got confirmation on the minimum viable funnel, do you then either go back into the engineering stage or go to um, the enhancing stage. And, you know, there are some metrics that we look at. There are really a handful of metrics, uh, just a small handful of metrics that we look mm -hmm. at that tell us, is it time to go to the enhancing stage where we optimize the campaign and turn it into a full-blown campaign? Or do we go back and, um, and re-engineer one or two components? And what we re-engineer or tweak is based on the metrics that we look at. And so that's all it is. Don't you start with the least, you start with the, the smallest uh, um, campaign, a minimum viable funnel, you prove the profitability, and then we go on to enhancing, turning it into a full-blown campaign, and then once we've done that, we go on to the expanding stage where you're, you're then able to acquire more customers by expanding your channels, your audiences, um, your budget, and so on. Yeah. If there's one thing in people going through the E5 um, campaign, if there's one thing you wish people would really focus on that maybe they don't necessarily focus on or it's not a it's not a you know a highlight feature what 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 do you think's the the like a hidden gem like wow that's tough there are so many hidden gems um no but um i'm just kidding i'm teasing um i really think it's this i think people still have a hang up of when they sit down to create their E5 campaign, um, they still end up thinking like a marketer, like a salesperson, like a business owner. And they're putting together a message. They're still putting everything through this filter of sales copy. And I don't think that way. When I sit down to create a marketing campaign, I tend to think more like a prosecutor. Even during the examination stage, I'm always, I'm looking for, right, like as you learned, Ed, I'm, I'm looking to understand what is it that they need to believe before I present my offer, right? So I'm thinking through what, of course, I go through the process, you know, in the examination stage of what are, what are the beliefs that they currently have? What are the beliefs that they need to have? What are the objections that I know that they're going to have to the unique mechanism? Um, and then I'm, I'm assembling a message during the marketing argument portion that is much more akin to a prosecutor's argument in court. Right, a prosecutor goes in and they know exactly what that jury needs to believe before they tell them, before they ask the jury to go and go in the deliberation room and find this person guilty. And everything that that prosecutor presents is designed to lead the jury to, uh, to come to that 
belief that the defendant is guilty. Everything they do, say, show, demonstrate is all for that one purpose. That's the same exact thing that I do. That's the same exact thing really in essence that your marketers need to do as they're using the E5Camp method going through the E5Camp masterclass is they're leading prospects to that marketing thesis. And the marketing thesis is really that the unique mechanism is the answer to get you what it is that you want. That's yeah. it. It's not sales copy. It's not like, should I say awesome? Should I say outrageous? Should yeah. I say huge? It's, it's, What's the power of it? Yeah, like, I mean, and look, that's, there, there's value in that, right? Absolutely. But that's not, you know, there's value in that. I don't want anybody, like, again, like, reading Gary Halbert's letters, some of the most valuable thing that, you, like, enormously valuable. I still mm -hmm. read, go back and read yeah. it. But what you're, you're, you know, you're talking about what you're talking about that there is nuance. You're talking about slight shifts in conversion, changing the word from great to outrageous. That's not going to double your conversions. That's not going to yeah. save a, a, you know, a bum campaign, so to speak. But mm -hmm. what will, what can double, triple your conversions? What can give you a record-breaking um, webinar is the big idea. That's it's yeah. it's what Mark Ford, you know, he used to talk about, you know, focus on the things that scream, not the things that whisper, you know, yeah. like, you know, button color, whisper, background color, whisper, right? Like for me, I could tell you, I've never in the 15 years I've been doing this, I've never ever once gone back and changed the first sentence of the third paragraph on the fourth page of a VSL script, right? Yeah. Ever, never, ever. Ever, yeah. because that's not right. I have gone back and changed the big idea. I have gone back and changed the lead, right? The headline, the subhead, the right. Um, I have gone back in and, and said, "Wow, I'm I'm missing this piece of the marketing argument." Um, but I've never said like I need to change that sentence, like you know, to use a different verb, because that's that's not it. That's exactly. that's not it. I just actually pulled out my um, this this is for the uh, just to illustrate two points. What I'm doing is I'm now taking the Swedish Scientist, which was a very successful webinar, and turning it into a long-form sales letter because the actual media that we're using doesn't matter, right? The, the structures are exactly the same. But what I did here is literally took that part, the constructing the marketing argument part, and so, you know, here we've got, you know, what do they have to believe about me? What do they have to believe about the solution? What do they have to believe about themselves? What do they have to believe about other solutions, right? And then I've made a note here, which is something you teach. Each belief, one claim. So every time I make a claim, I need two proof points. Yeah. Right? So there. So you don't have to be a um, creative mastermind. You have to go, okay, well, here's one way to prove that point. Here's the second way to prove that point, right? Yep. And here's the thing. If you don't have two proof points, then the question becomes, well, how would I prove that? Yeah. And make sure you do it. Right. Yeah, and so, that's right. You, you think you're, that's that's so what powerful. you think there is like a prosecutor, right? A prosecutor exactly. would never make a claim without saying, like, because any, like, look, that's what for everybody to understand. Any anybody can make a string of claims. Don't like just because you say it's great, it works, it's easy, anybody could do it, doesn't mean that they're going to believe you. The healthiest perspective to have, especially today, especially on the internet, is they're not going to believe anything you say because they, if you're using the typical sales funnel model, they're putting everything you say through the filter of this is a sales funnel. Of course, they're making that claim. But when you say, right, this brings your, your cholesterol down, it can bring your cholesterol down up to 50 points in a matter of weeks. Why? Because, and then you give the, the reason why, which is, is one of the different uh, 11 different types of proof points, right? You lead them to say, ah, oh, I get it, rather than just a, um, uh, um, a claim. Let me give one really quick, go ahead, Ed, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, and that's, because if you do, if they read claims without proof, even in, uh, subconsciously, even if it's not consciously, that's where you start triggering the limbic part of their brain, and it's going, uh, "Hang on, hang on a second. You know, yeah. it's subconsciously, even if it's not conscious, subconsciously they're going, "This is what I'm being sold to, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. being sold to because there's claims without proof." Yeah, no, so well said, man. So well said, right? You, you, you know, you allow them to go, well, how do I know that? 
mm -hmm. right? Like, well, wait, you know, because you you said to me that Facebook is a better platform than Google. Well, why? How? Like, of course you're saying oh, that you're selling it's, something. It, 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 oh, it, sorry, this just burst into my head, and this is absolutely crucial. And it was actually a question. Um, here's the thing. So you're sitting there. You're an enthusiast. You're just starting out. How does this E5 work? This is the best thing ever for you because yeah. your proof points are too. Remember, I said proof points. I didn't say your specific life experience proof point. I'm saying two proof points. So, for example, a lot of my Swedish scientist stuff, because my coaching program was new, so a lot of the proof points came from scientific yeah. research. Here, so this became my proof point, right? So it, other people's proof points. Remember, yeah, yeah. you don't have oh. testimonials yet, right? In your first thing, here's the proof, point. but you've got to have a proof point. But it, your proof point could come from a third party. So I'm so glad you brought that up because it's yeah. absolutely vital. Oh, right so point. good, dude. I, I, I really so good. I could go on for so long. There's so much I want to share. Let me, let me say this because I, I like. So a couple things. What you said is worth its weight in gold. Like, and I hope everybody really gets it. Just remember, remember with the E5 Camp method, during the marketing portion, you're not talking about the product. So if you're just starting out and you don't have testimonials, testimonials don't go during the marketing um that the 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 um the marketing argument. You could find if if there is Testimonials are only one of 11 different types of proof points, right? So don't think that you have to have customers that say, yeah, Bob's program is great. Remember, that doesn't, that doesn't come until much later on. To prove your thesis, to prove the unique mechanism is, is the answer, it has nothing to do with your testimonials. Um, yeah. The other thing that you said that I think is, um, and it comes during the examination stage. That's where you find the 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 proof points um, yes. and if there's a claim and every part of what we've just talking about every, what you've got to understand and this blows my mind because the detail and thoroughness so did I, Todd just threw it out like he wasn't even thinking let me highlight it he said there are 11 types of proof point right and guess what in here uh, here are the 11 types of proof points you can find right for each of these belief statements that you have to prove so you don't even have to think about it right you have to you know you can say okay well this is the type of proof point i could use this you know who knows where they but there are 11 types and he's able to say oh there are 11 types that's the level of detail in this e5 which is phenomenal to me i i love it i love how passionate you are you know it it it, it um you know, you also said one other thing that I just want to address. You know, one of the big questions that I get asked um, is, well, is this appropriate for a new marketer? Or is this appropriate if I'm still working on my product or, I, you know, I don't have a product yet? Um, well, the answer is yes. Not only yes, but you're better off working on your marketing campaign before the product is done or before you've Absolutely. even chosen a product, right? Yes. It's much easier to, I love when we get the opportunity to work on the marketing because then I'm, I, I'm able to make the marketing the best I, I possibly can make it, the most appealing right that I possibly can without the, 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 the constraint of the product. And then we just make sure that the product fulfills on the marketing. Right, like right. I'm able to say, what is my market? What are these folks going to go wild over? What are they going to yeah. love? And 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 then I certainly say to myself, well, can I fulfill on that? Like, can I deliver on that? And as long yeah. as the answer is yes, you never want to make right. As long as the answer is yes, then I go right. We put together the the campaign, and then I build it into the product. That's the absolute best freaking way to do this. The yeah, other yeah, thing totally. is that and, yeah, and instead of proof, and and this is this is so important right instead of you know you could literally have at the end of you, you could have a buy button and say hey this is in beta in the old days we used to call this dry testing and yeah. it was a it was a dodgy but thanks to all these hipsters in brooklyn's with their beard uh, <laughs> right this is the standard way of testing now it's totally cool every you know you can test your entire funnel to the point of somebody clicking on a buy button and say hey look we're in preparation stage you've now been added to the beta list as soon as we've got something we'll let you know thank you for your interest right yeah so you can also like especially totally in the legit. 
Yeah, especially in the, well, like I mean, my God, you're absolutely right, and especially in the info space, where like legitimately, mm -hmm. right? Legitimately, like I remember when I first launched my first MFA coaching program many, many, many moons ago. There was no coaching program. I said it's starting next week, and I'm gonna, you know, and then and then I hosted each session live, right? So I did. I sold. I didn't even have it yet which gives you the ability to, right? And I, I, I told them that, like it starts next week, I'm gonna roll each lesson out for you live. But you know, the, the beautiful thing, Ed, is that, is that this is just, it's, it might seem complex, but really when you get behind the scenes, you really, after you learn this method, you will see that it takes away the confusion, that mm. you don't have to worry about, like it's, it really is so, so simple underneath the um, underneath the hood, and the thing yep. that you know, like, look, I'll 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 leave your your folks with this. Um, that you know, look, this is not a push button solution. I, I've always said I wish there was a push button solution. If there was, awesome. I wouldn't be on this webinar right now. I'd be <laughs> pushing the button, um, and that's the truth. Uh, and I should know because I many many I spent many years looking for that button. Um, but here's the thing, the beauty is this, that this is about not just giving you the fish, this is about teaching you how to fish. This is about giving, this is about you having skills, knowledge, and ability that you can use for the rest of your life to, to, to market and sell virtually any product in any market, anytime you'd like. Skills that nobody can take away from you. Skills that you can use to partner on a venture, to launch a new venture, to consult with other people with, to help grow other businesses. Skills that you can use to make more money anytime you'd like. This is, these are timeless principles. When you understand how to create, develop your own big idea, you'll never worry about being in a crowded marketplace because there is no crowded marketplace because you can always cut through the clutter and grab attention and engagement with a big idea. The, the, this is never about your product getting knocked off because coming up with a unique mechanism is a marketing action. You can always come up with a new unique mechanism at any point. You can always construct a rock solid marketing argument that leads people to see why your thing, product, service, software, professional services does not matter. This works in every single, we've got folks, excuse me, we've got folks that have used this proven to use it in 23 different mark uh, 23 different countries around the globe now with in in just this new class we're Even over 31 easy. different we're over 31 different countries people that have enrolled in this in 65 different markets and industries selling hundreds of different types of products and services we've done everything i've done everything that I possibly can to make this a complete no-brainer for you. I would encourage you, don't even say yes. Just say maybe. Put me and this method to the test for the next um, for the next 30 days. 30 days, I promise you that it will open your eyes. If you're not thrilled for any reason or no reason whatsoever, send one email, you'll get all your money back and you could st still keep all of the crazy bonuses, insanely valuable bonuses that we put together for you as my way of just saying thank you. All I just put it to the test and see for yourself. Yeah, no, I completely concur. And the other thing that I'm so passionate about this is everybody who uh, wants to sign up and you'll see a link below this video here is that sign up using that link. And I'll simply next week, not after 30 days, I'm so passionate about this. Next week, I'm going to send you our times so we can do a game plan for you for implementing E5. I've gone through it like a fine tooth comb and I will sit down with you individually, with me personally, to uh, get uh, this uh, working for you. So I'll, I will do that for you. Todd Brown, awesome. thank you very much. This was an epic. We must do this again. And if I, at any time, if you'd love me on uh, as part of the E5, let me know. You know I'm your greatest fan. I And I'm your only, I, it, it's not because of your devilish good look. So that, that helps. There's no question about it. The animal <laughs> magnetism is a positive. There's no question about that. But it's the reality is I've seen this work. It's paid for my girls' school fees, which are extensive. Uh, so it's it, it really is uh, an amazing thing. So I just hope people get religion about it. 
regardless of where they they get it, it is a genuine move forward in direct market. The the E five product, it's going to be mentioned like product launch formula. It's going to be mentioned like the ask method. It's going to be mentioned like the challenge, because it's a true genuine step forward in the way we think about things. And I would argue it's it's the first marketing campaign design system for the modern age where we're competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the planet. And that's why unique mechanism is so important. With that, thank you everybody for being part of this. It has been an absolute blast. Thank you, Todd Brown. Uh, and we will uh, we'll see you all around the traps. Thank you so, so much, everybody. Thanks, thanks everybody. See you later.